which shoe should you buy? Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. On Instagram this past week, I asked if you all would be interested in a comparison video between the New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2 and the Hoka Mach X. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please go do that. Just click that follow button, please. I'm trying to get to 10K, we're getting there. And I can't do it without the help of all of you. Anyway, so the majority of you on Instagram said, yes, you want a comparison video. So here we are today, you ask and you shall receive. And I think these are two really good shoes to compare because they're in the same category of shoes and I've been wearing them quite a bit for my New York City Marathon training. However, I will say that I have significantly more miles in the Super Comp Trainer V2 at this point than I do on the Hoka Mach X. Still, I think I know what these shoes are all about and the differences between them. I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Both of these shoes are meant to be super trainers or more like hybrid shoes, if you will. They're supposed to be able to take you the distance, the mileage in comfort with also having a little bit of spice and pizzazz if you wanna take them for a tempo day run. So today we are gonna talk about the differences and similarities of these shoes from the uppers, the midsoles to the outsoles. And at the end, I'll tell you which shoe I would buy. And of course, hopefully you'll be able to determine which shoe you would buy. And of course, both of these shoes were sent to me by the brands themselves and running warehouse. However, none of the companies are gonna see this before you. They can't tell me what to say. And all of my opinions are always my very own, no matter what? Starting with the uppers of the Mach X and the SC Trainer V2, they're both using an engineered mesh. Uh, the Mach X has like a jacquard mesh, but I, it's all engineered mesh when it's all said and done. But they do fit slightly different. I find that the Mach X has a more snug fit to it. I'm able to get a better lockdown with the laces, whereas the SC Trainer V2 has a slightly looser fit and I'm having to cinch those laces down a little bit more to get the same kind of fit I'm able to in the Mach X. What's funny is that when comparing these two shoes, I feel like the Mach X is snugger, but in my first run impressions video, I actually said that I thought there was a little too much material in here and I had to cinch the laces down to get that right fit. But when you have these two shoes on side by side, you really see that the SC Trainer V2 has even more material and a looser fit. They both have padding around the ankle colors of the shoes and they also both have like the same exact kind of tongue. It's very thin and gusseted and sits nicely across the top of your foot. Breathability wise, I'd say they're neck and neck. It's been hot and humid here in New York and the air, whatever air there is, has been passing through both of the uppers of these two shoes. Are they the most breathable uppers out there? Probably not, uh, but generally speaking, they are gonna get the job done. Both of these uppers are certainly gonna provide you that daily trainer slash super shoe mix. Uh, I'd say maybe the Mach X has a slightly lower profile upper, and that's sort of a theme with the entire shoe. But when it comes to which of these uppers I like a little bit better, I think I am gonna go with the Mach X here, just because once I get that nice cinch down lace feeling, I feel locked in there, but it's a really close match. Moving on down to the midsoles, both are trying to provide you the same type of experience, but they do it differently. In the Mach X, we have uh, a dual layer midsole. We have P-backs right under the upper of the shoe. Uh, that's that first layer. And then we have a CM EVA layer under that to give you a little bit more firmness and structure to it. Um, because the p -backs is pretty soft. And sandwiched in between those two layers of foam, we have a p -backs plate, whereas in the SC Trainer V2, we have a carbon plate, which they're calling an energy arc, uh, mixed with just one type of foam, and that is fuel cell foam. I like the way both of these shoes feel when I run. Uh, the Mach X feels lower to the ground to me, and lower profile, as I said about its upper, feels like that with the midsole as well. 
and the plate is more subdued. It's not as aggressive as you might think. Uh, I don't know if that's because it is a PBAX plate or just the way that it's layered in there, uh, but it's a pleasant feeling. It's not too jarring and it's perfect for daily training use when you don't really want to pick up the pace. While I wouldn't say you get ground feel in the Mach X, I think you get more than you do in the SE Trainer V2. In the SE Trainer V2, it feels like you're sitting higher off the ground. And I'd also say a little bit more pop. Uh, it feels a bouncier, maybe, the foam, and I tend to like a little bit more thickness in a midsole and perhaps uh, a little more bounce and something that's gonna help me feel more pep in my step. I think the ride of it is great when you wanna take it slow, the plate's not getting in the way, but when you want to, pick up the pace a little bit, you really are able to utilize that plate and the bounciness helps. I think the Mach-X has a lot of those qualities, but in just a lower profile, when you do want to pick up the pace though, it is able to propel you forward and you feel that plate a little bit more. Uh, but I think for me, I like the SE Trainer V2's midsole better just because uh, I like the bounciness and the less ground feel, I guess, just a more thick feeling shoe. The Mach X has 39 millimeters of stag and the SE Trainer has 40, I believe. And I think they both have a six millimeter drop or this one has five and this one has six, but either way, it's very close together, but they do feel different. Like this does feel lower to the ground to me. So if you're a person who likes the feeling of being able to go a little bit faster and have some of that ground feel, but also comfort, then the Mach X is totally gonna be the pick for you. And if you're a little bit more like me and want something that feels a teeny bit cushier, then I think the SC Trainer is gonna be right up your alley. Moving on down to the outsoles, they're both just using good old rubber. They both have a pretty decent amount of rubber. The SC Trainer V2 is pretty worn at this point because I have well over 100 miles on it. Um, and the Mach X has way less miles on it and it's holding up just fine. Both of these rubbers seem to be doing the job despite this one being pretty messed up looking. It still grips onto everything just fine. I haven't had a single issue with it. And the Mach X is holding its own still right now as it gets those miles in. I feel confident going around corners in both of these shoes. I don't feel like they're gonna slip out from under me. I think the, the outsole here is a tie. They're both pretty good. The Hoka Mach X and the New Balance SC Trainer V2 are the same exact price, $179.95 on runningwarehouse.com. So again, it's gonna come down to that good old preference. What do you want a little bit more? Less ground feel, slightly bouncier, maybe considered a little bit more of a wild ride. I mean, if you look back to the first version of the Super Comp Trainer and how crazy that shoe was, this is certainly watered down. However, it still feels a little bit more wild than something like the Mach X, which feels a little more tame. If you're interested in either of these shoes, I will put links in the description down below. You can click those and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind, these are affiliate links with Running Warehouse. However, it doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos and then telling you which of these I would buy. I think it's pretty much evident that because I like the midsole of the SC Trainer V2 slightly more, it puts it in the lead as the shoe that I would pick. However, both of these shoes make me very happy and they are both solid options for that super trainer, hybrid shoe that a lot of people these days are looking for. And I love that they both exist and that they're different feelings so that people with different preferences can pick between the two. Have you tried either the SC Trainer V2 or the Hoka Mach X? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Well, everyone, that concludes my video of which shoe should you buy, the Hoka Mach X or the New Balance SC Trainer V2. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe, and when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. And of course, the biggest question, which of these shoes do you like the look of better? Maybe this? I, I don't know, I'm kind of torn. I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. It wouldn't be a run like heller video without an appearance from Rue.